Hello! Welcome back to me guessing weekend update jokes. Uh, I'm Kara Minix, and last week, Mikey Day as Don Jr. wore the same blazer as me. So, I'm counting that as a win. Uh, so, we've officially gotten one thing right! Woohoo! It only took three tries? This is the fourth? <laughs> Um, but it's okay. Maybe we'll get some right this week. Who knows? Let's, um, get into it. A writer for The New Yorker and correspondent for CNN, Jeffrey Tubin, was suspended this week for exposing his genitals on camera during a Zoom meeting. He claims it was an accident. You know, because you too take off your pants during work hours in the middle of a meeting all the time. I have to wonder what it's like to work in person with people like this. Did they, like, go to the bathroom 20 times in a day to expose themselves in peace, or is it just their way of coping with the stress of a pandemic? <laughs> These headlines and jokes are so long this week, I can't do them all in one take. <laughs> it's been a week of highs and lows for the LGBT plus community. The Pope came out in support of same-sex civil unions, and a pair of gay penguins stole an entire nest from a lesbian penguin couple at the same zoo in an attempt to have a baby. While this move by the Pope may prevent many young Catholic members of the LGBT plus community from years of abuse and self-hatred, those penguins are really giving the community a bad name. Would you believe that this is actually the second time that the penguins have committed such an offense? Last year, they stole another egg from a penguin family that didn't result in a chick. Honestly, I don't know how the Pope is willing to support a group of such criminals. The current stolen egg is also unlikely to result in any chicks, given that a lesbian couple would not have been able to fertilize any eggs. These penguins should really make like Nicolas Cage and wait until after the chicks are born to steal one. The most interesting part about all this is how closely the penguin LGBT plus community mirrors the human one. Gay men are always front and center, putting their needs before others in the community. Couldn't they just let lesbians have this one thing? <laughs> An image of a cat was found etched into a hillside at the Nazca Lines in Peru. The reason it took so long to find was because it was hiding inside of a cardboard box for the past 2,000 years. <laughs> Many Republicans are jumping ship as Trump falls behind in polls. Republican Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska has suddenly decided to speak his mind about Trump, attacking him for everything from disrespecting women to ignoring Uyghurs in concentration camps and his mishandling of the pandemic. I love this energy, Ben, but where was this four years ago? Oh, you don't actually care about any of these issues and are just talking about it now because it's convenient for you politically? It's funny because he's spoken out about these things in the past, but you wouldn't know it if you looked at his voting record. He's like one of those classic people who said they would never vote for Trump but did anyway in 2016, except his voting record is completely public. Senate votes are not a secret, Mr. Sass. Not sure they taught you that at Harvard or Yale. <laughs> A NASA space probe touched down on a doomsday asteroid this week, potentially capturing a large sample to bring back to Earth. The probe has been described as pogo sticking off of the asteroid. Honestly, good for NASA. I've never managed to get more than three jumps on a pogo stick, and they successfully hit an asteroid. Scientists hope that the sample could shed light on how the solar system was formed 4.5 billion years ago, potentially providing the building blocks for life to arise on Earth. Listen, I know this is a great scientific achievement, but I don't think figuring out how life was started is a good idea. At best, we'll create another life form that destroys another planet and themselves. At worst, we'll create another life form that destroys another planet, themselves, and us. Which actually... Maybe we should do that. <laughs> the United Kingdom plans to infect healthy people with COVID in order to test a vaccine. For more on that, let's speak with test subject number 0132. And that's when the test subject, person who's volunteered to be a test subject for the vaccine comes in. And I would ask them questions like, why did you do this? And what is going on? Is this a good idea? Et cetera, et cetera. And they would say things like, well, I'm a millennial. I have no job and I need the money. And plus, I would like to die, if possible. The Department of Justice has filed a lawsuit against Google for an illegal monopoly over internet search and search advertising. Shockingly enough, this is a bipartisan effort with support from such people as Attorney General William Barr and Senator Elizabeth Warren. 
I always knew hatred of Monopoly would bring this country together. Of course, the last time they played, the Attorney General insisted that Senator Warren play with the thimble, and Warren made many, many jokes about Barr licking the boot. But hey, playing together is progress. <laughs> More than 56 million people have already cast their votes around the country, breaking the record for early voting which was set in 2016's election. Statistics have shown that Democrats are more likely to vote early, which really just proves my joke from last week. The Supreme Court has allowed the Trump administration to end the census count early. Unluckily for the GOP, procrastinators also tend to be conservative. <laughs> The FDA has approved the first COVID treatment, remdesivir, an antiviral drug. Not only has the World Health Organization said the drug doesn't have any effect on coronavirus, it also costs $3,120 for people in the U.S. with private insurance. If I wanted to spend thousands of dollars on something that doesn't work, I'd just get really into crystals or go back to college. <laughs> In international news, Trump has a Chinese bank account, and Russia and Iran are both interfering in our elections, including sending threatening emails to registered voters. I, too, send threatening emails to registered voters, but they're more along the lines of, if you don't vote, I will come for you. <laughs> Purdue Pharma, the company behind OxyContin, pled guilty to three federal charges, including defrauding the government and will pay $8 million and shut down as a company. Many blame Purdue Pharma for the current epidemic in the U.S. The opioid one, not the other one. At this point, people need to realize that naming yourself Purdue is not a good idea. You're bound to get a very deserving bad rap. <laughs> in shocking news that no one could have predicted, streaming service Quibi is shutting down after six short months. Who wouldn't want to pay $8 a month for content specifically made for your phone because there are no other apps like that for free? At least they tried to keep customers entertained with such innovative shows as Chrissy Teigen is a fake judge and then there's also one about renovating old crime scene houses. I'd love to have been in any Quibi pitch meeting. They're like, we want to take some incredibly successful actress like Anna Kendrick and make her perform opposite an animated sex doll. Oh, but no time for character development because you have to watch it in 10 minute increments because everyone's favorite part of watching Netflix is those 10 seconds it takes to play the next episode. <laughs> a painting by Jacob Lawrence that has been missing for decades was found this week after a visitor at the Met recognized the style as identical to a painting that she knew was hanging in her neighbor's apartment. Can you imagine going through all of the effort involved in stealing a painting and then having your nosy bitch neighbor tell on you to the Met? See, this is why snitches get stitches. <laughs> Rudy Giuliani has been in hot water this week over his participation in both an unsubstantiated New York Post article about Hunter Biden and Borat's new movie, Borat's subsequent movie film. To answer some of our many, many questions, here's Rudy Giuliani. And that's when... Kate McKinnon comes in as Rudy Giuliani, and I ask her questions about both of these things, including, oh, were you really just tucking in your shirt? And how can a blind person identify Hunter Biden, etc. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Most of the past weeks, I feel like I am getting closer. <laughs> but then last week happened, and I didn't even get the format right. <laughs> and so this week I just did whatever I wanted, which apparently is mostly just saying the news and not very many jokes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll get at least some of the headlines correct. I feel like they're gonna talk about some of these things, who knows. They love to focus on Trump, but I don't, because <laughs> I think it's kind of boring and easy. It's like an easy target. And plus they focus on Trump so much in like the cold opens and stuff like this week, they're going to do a cold open about the debate. So why would I focus on Trump, you know, in now in what is this called? Weekend update. <laughs> One of these days they're going to make Amy Coney Barrett jokes and I'm going to be right, <laughs> but they still haven't done that. She's getting, um, confirmed potentially on Monday, so maybe next week they'll make some? But next week is Halloween, so I I don't know. I also like this Rudy Giuliani stuff is so weird in itself, it's like hard to make jokes about because it's just so strange. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> it seems like I'm giving up. 
I'm going to keep doing it. And one day, just probabilistically, if I keep doing this long enough, I will get something correct. And then we will have a party with just me. No one else because, you know, pandemic. Ah. <sighs>